Welcome, welcome. It's been a good conference so far, and we're really, really excited about uh, going to the museum tonight. Uh, the air and space. Oh, holy cow! Eating under the uh, shuttle Discovery. That's going to be quite a, quite a thing. Can't wait. Anyway, pre-built applications. So I have to give. So we have. There's on the upcoming slide. There's eight applications we have today in goods and services. So I have to give a preview of all eight of those in 30 minutes. So some of this is going to be a whirlwind uh, tour, uh, definitely high level. And then if there's more questions or you want to see more information, see us tonight at the museum and we'll go into as much detail as you want. So, But why pre-build applications? So, <clears throat> you know, we, we've spent a lot of time uh, developing, developing these applications, working with our customers, uh, to fine-tune them, add new features, new, new enhancements. Uh, spent a lot of time. And, uh, you know, all of these applications you're about to see, you could, uh, if you had the time, the resources, and the dollars, and the, and the knowledge, you could do it yourself because we, we use DI tools uh, to, do, to do all of them. Um, but if you see something you like, you know, and you're th some, something you're thinking about doing your, in your company, this is a great way to leap into that without spending all, that, all the resources and time. Um, feature packed, and we're gonna go over the, uh, the benefits and features. So here they are, the program advisor, a lot of people have are using that, that's probably our number one application uh, out there today. Uh, survey advisor, distributor advisor, supplier advisor, inventory advisor, GL advisor, see that the common theme here is advisor. Um, uh, performance advisor and Canna BI, and so the two new ones. So a lot of these, some of these have been in here for a while, uh, but performance advisor brand new. So we're excited to show that, and Canna BI brand new. So uh, excited to show that one too. But so we're going to take a little in depth into each one. So program advisor is really written to track uh, sales. Whether you're in wine and spirits, whether you're in cannabis, whether you're in selling shoes, you know, any type of s company that sells could use this to track, you know, we call them programs, but really they, there could be programs, uh, incentives, blitzes, quotas, goals, whatever you want to call it, um, this thing can track it. Uh, so you set up a program. Uh, all these, this is a list of programs that are currently running. For every program, you can see your current sales, what your goal is. And then you can dive into this stuff. So it's not just a static dashboard. You can dive into it, and, uh, and it's updated every day. So here's the kind of the summary for Program Advisor. Daily updated results, tracking and forecasting goals versus actuals, work with any program type. So we, we're currently supporting, I think, up to 14 different types of programs you can track. Uh, a lot of stuff. A uh, uh, big thing is we automatically calculate complex program payouts. So all those incentive-based things that you're doing as a company uh, can be done here. And if you do it here, we also handle the supplier chargeback reporting all automatically. So with that, I'm going to jump in real quick and pick the right screen for that one. Program Advisor. So this is kind of a quick overview. It's web-based, so I'm going to go right into the application. And you can see this is already set up on my library. So we have the buttons for Program Advisor across the top here, so I can quickly, if I want to go and jump into my dashboard. <laughs> you know, this is my dashboard view. Um, I, here's my program summary view. Uh, if I'm into graphs, I can do performance graphs on on those programs that I just looked at, uh, different summaries, um, all right here. Any of the programs I'm looking at, uh, and here's the big thing, it's not, you're just not looking at numbers, but if I'm looking at this program that says, okay, 19 crimes, or, you know, we're at 130, the goal is 106, I'd like to dive into that. So you can click on any of these programs. There's a whole bunch of dive options, reports and a analytics, uh, you can do on all the programs. Uh, also, um, this, is, this is a totally interactive application, uh, in your, so this is using Diport In. So the previous presenter, presenter talked about Diport In. This uses Diport In as well. So here's all the programs that have been set up. So if I want to go in and edit a program, I can just click on a program. 
and here's all the setup. So this is the program setup information. Uh, if I want to tell what products are in the program, I just click on the products button and here they are. And I can see the actual SKUs that are getting brought into this program. Uh, if there's any customer filters, which this one does have customer filters, I can click on that and I can see, okay, this is just an on-premise program, but it could be uh, on-premise for just certain counties and, you know, uh, C stores and all, you know, whatever filters you want to put on it. So it can handle it all. And the most recent thing we added is integration with our survey advisor product, which I'm about to show you. So now in program advisor, you can say for this program, not only sales rep, do you have a goal, but you also have to complete that survey that happens to have a picture on it because I need a picture of the end cap or the display for, for your sales to qualify in that program. So now you can link it with the survey advisor application, uh, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff, a little more stuff in here, but uh, so that's program advisor just from a high level. Again, everything is updated every night. Uh, all your salespeople would come here uh, so you don't have to send out weekly updates or, you know, however you do that today. Uh, they, come to, they come into their dashboard and they see their stuff updated every day. All right, so that's Program Advisor. Okay, Survey Advisor. So this has been out for a, a little bit. We've done a lot of enhance, enhancements uh, recently uh, to the Survey Advisor application. But, you know, a lot of companies, if you're doing surveys, you can take advantage of this. So, you know, we track who has completed surveys, who has not, uh, centralizes all the management of surveys into this one tool. Uh, we do centralized reporting of the results. Um, uh, we sort offline mode. So once the survey is, is synchronized to, uh, to the, your, the iPad or the phone or whatever device you're using, uh, you don't have to be connected to the internet anymore to take that survey. You only have to be connected to transmit the results back up. Uh, surveys can include pictures. Uh, we track lat long, latitude, longitude, where, uh, when the survey was done. Um, and surveys can be standard, uh, standard one-off survey or it can be recurring. So now a quick uh, thing into survey advice. Okay, so I set up a, like a quick little survey just for uh, DIUC. Uh, it's my DIUC survey, a back bar survey. And I, can, I put in the from and to date that the survey is gonna be running. So when that goes out to the reps, they'll see they have to complete this by the end of September. Uh, but let's go in, let's look at this row. So I'm gonna edit the questions. So, so these are the questions I have in the survey. It's gonna start out just saying uh, enter a quantity, just so, whatever, enter a number, uh, take a picture. Uh, uh, this one, brand, brand specific info, it says the answer type is no answer. Uh, when you look at the survey, all that does is show, it's a, like a separator on the, on the form. So you may have question, 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 and then you want another heading on the form to say, okay, now we're gonna go into something else. That's the way you do it. Uh, I can just say no answer. Because the answer type in Survey Advisor kind of defines what the system is going to do. Like if you want the user to enter a date for this question, like, you know, what is the owner's birth date? Then the answer type is going to be date. So when the, when the, whoever's taking the survey, when they get to, get to that question and they click on the answer box, a calendar is going to come up because we know it's supposed to be a date. So every, everything is driven by the answer type. And here's what I want to show you. So this brand selection, this is a question, brand selection, has multiple responses. So if I go into this response, I can set up something like this where I've actually hand entered responses. You know, I have a red brand, a green one, a blue, a yellow, and brown. And up here I tell the user has to pick between one and some number. So they have to pick at least one, and how many do I want them to pick? Maybe if I, maybe if I just want them to pick one out of those five, you know, I could have said minimum one, maximum one, or whatever. So the user is gonna be presented that list when they're taking a survey, and then they could pick 
up to the whatever maximum number I, I, I gave. Another way is, here's a, the next multiple response, is here's a list that I imported. So I went into Diver, I dove on uh, brand, and I imported that into Survey Advisor. So it's coming right out of my system exactly how the brand is represented in Diver or whatever your source system is. So now what that gives me the ability to do is once the surveys are done, I can link these survey results with my sales results or whatever results you want to link together. And now I can do reporting that way, saying, okay, here's my survey answers, here's my sales to back it up um, and tie that data together. And then the last option I want to show you here is we can actually, uh, through a new feature, pull data directly out of one of your C bases. So here I have a question and I'm saying I want to pull brands out of the product C bases, C base directly and I already have a supplier filter so it's going to pull all brands for a certain supplier and, it's, and that's all I had to do. So when that survey gets sent down to the device to be taken by a sales rep, when they get to that question, up is going to come a list of all the brands for that supplier, all auto automatically, right from that C base. So if you think about other industries, healthcare, you know, you could, that could be populated with healthcare C base information, uh, or any other industry that you're in. Um, so the way it works today, you create the survey. Um, I was actually going to demo taking the survey, but there's some technical difficulties with my iPad and the connection here, so I can't do it. Uh, but uh, so you enter the survey, they get downloaded to all the people that are supposed to take it. And if it's a customer based survey, it'll be tied. Like if I'm a salesperson and I have 80 customers and, I, and it's supposed to go to all 80, you know, I'll see a list of all the customers that I need to take that survey for. Um, when a survey is done, it gets transmitted back to a central server for all the anal analytics. And like I said, you can tie it in with your existing sales data or whatever other data you have you want to tie together. So that's Survey Advisor. Very cool, very powerful. Okay. Uh, Distributor Advisor. So Distributor Advisor we've had around for a bit. Uh, we have a number of customers using this. It runs on a web browser and or on our dive tab platform, so on the tablet and on the phone. Uh, access any content types along with a uh, distributor advisor. You can load sell sheets, price sheets, you know, product displays, pictures, all those can be in that environment. Um, okay, so let me hop into distributor advisor. So this is DiveTab running on my laptop. And if I launched this on my iPad, it would look exactly the same. So right from DiveTab, I can click on this button that says Dashboards. And I have a couple more buttons here, but I can go right to this Business Review page, which is actually on DivePort. So this is the DivePort page that I'm accessing right through DiveTab. Again, I'm on my PC, you can do the same thing from your tablet and from a phone. Uh, so once I'm here, you know, I can click across the various business review button, uh, screens we've designed. You know, once I, when I'm on a screen, uh, these are all diveable. So I can, I can click on a number and, and dive further. And just like you can a diver, so I'm here I'm diving by supplier. Uh, if I want to change my dive and I want to dive by something else, you know, maybe uh, uh, the brand. You know, here's the dive by brand. Uh, and then you can dive further. Um, very simple. So that's one option for distributor advisor. You can, is you can go to right to uh, your dive port dashboards. And we also have a lot of things built into DiveTab itself. So I can quickly go in and, so we have this overview screen designed. Uh, so this is showing you today, this year, to, just for today's business compared to last year, same day. Decimal cases, nine liter, accounts sold, revenue, gross profit, this year to last year for the day. 
Uh, then we have another tab down here at the bottom. So this is list year to month to date, month to date and year to date, this year to last year to the same day and all the numbers. And then we have month end. So now you can compare month to date and year to date where I'm at today through the end of the month last year. So see maybe where your target is. What kind of target do you need to hit? And all of these are diveable. So any place highlighted in blue, like these accounts sold numbers, uh, all these dimension counts over here, look, so like supplier, I can click on supplier and quickly go to my totals by supplier across all the summary fields that we have in here. Any of these you can open up. So if I want to open up decimal cases, I just click on that and I can expand it. Now I can see this year versus last year and the plus or minus and the percent difference. Any of these I can sort automatically. So if I want to sort on the plus and minus and I want to sort it sort it up so I can see where I'm down the most. And then I can click on this and I can dive further. I can go to that, that supplier's homepage and now I can dive in anything. Let me go look at the brands for that supplier. You can see how quick it is, right? Very quick. So that's the other thing is anything with the dive tab, the iOS, uh, that's been optimized to, uh, uh, to pull data very, very quickly. Uh, then we got some reports in here. So, you know, canned reports. Uh, so this is a kind of a, an account universe report. So by customer type, you know, how many accounts do we have on that, uh, for that customer type? And then how many did we actually sell into? Uh, and what percent does that make? You know, and if you don't want to look at it that way, you can change, change your dive right on the fly here. So maybe I want to do it by brand instead of customer type. And here's the same information by brand. So there's a lot of cool things you can do reporting-wise in, in this environment. Um, and you can offload it. You can export it to a spreadsheet. You can open it up in ProDiver. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's Distributor Advisor. Pre-built, you know, for the distributor side of the business. The next thing, Supplier Advisor. So very similar to Distributor Advisor, only it branches into the supplier side of the business. Uh, updating inf uh, information anywhere, anytime. Uh, you know, similar, similar things that I talked about with, with uh, Distributor Advisor. Uh, the big difference is it has uh, depletions, it has uh, uh, shipments, uh, and it has uh, retail all built in because uh, the supplier looks at all facets of that. So to jump into Supplier Advisor real quick to show you. I told you this was going to be a whirlwind tour. So. Uh, so this one is set up on My Library already. So I can click on my little My Library. So we have, uh, we have a general section, we have a business review section, we have an analysis section, a data management. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, I want to do, I'm going to do a business review. I want to go to some of those, some of those pages so I can do that very easily. Uh, here's the matrix, here's the scorecard for, for the RAD. Uh, all this stuff is diveable. Uh, go back here just to show you, I can look at my, uh, here's my shipments. So I can look at all my shipment measures, month to date, year to date, rolling 12. Here's my shipment measures on the left hand side. And then I can quickly go to my, okay, you look at my RAD data. Here's my retail account data, all those measures. And then here's my depletion data. Let me look at that. And here's all those measures. And oh, by the way, all these is diveable. I can click on it and dive into the data. Uh, so that is uh, Supplier Advisor uh, uh, from a high level. Inventory Advisor. So how many of us have inventory? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's a great tool. So this has been out for a, for a bit. Understanding what inventory is costing your company and what's the returning, uh, what's returning in revenue. Uh, all of your inventory related KPIs and metrics in one spot. Uh, so the metrics and KPIs we have in here is based on uh, industry standards for inventory, spe specialized for that. So to show you that real quick. Uh, 
an inventory advisor. So there's a couple different screens here. Uh, one view is just looks at inventory by itself. We have another view that looks at inventory and sales data together to come up with those uh, KPIs and metrics. Uh, we have one with inventory and people. We have a self-service. So just like you saw previously in on the presentations this morning, you know, any of the measures we have, you can build your own dashboard. Uh, so let me just go into some of these. So here's an example of the inventory page. You know, what's your Im current inventory carrying cost? And what's the annual carrying cost to support that inventory? Uh, how much dead stock do you have over time? Uh, how accurate is your inventory at any, any given point? What shrinkage, what, you know, what uh, product is your, you know, suddenly you, you lost track of where some product is. So, you know, you, you, know you, go out, you go out and do counts and you're supposed to have, the computer says you're supposed to have 100 and you count 90. Well, you just lost 10, right? So, but this lets you track it, find out where it went. Uh, active SKU count, average cost per unit, all these, all these numbers are diveable. So I can, you know, click on my total inventory number and start diving by supplier. Uh, compare month to date versus last, last uh, year, month to date. Uh, and again, I can dive into this if I want to. I can change my top level dive to be something else. Uh, so Sazerac, I can drill down and look at their inventory and see, what, see what's taken up most of the dollars here and then go further. Um, uh, quick views across the top so you can change it. So you can filter this exact screen down to what you want to see. You can, look, you can get all these numbers, but just for one supplier if you wanted to. Uh, but so this is the inventory side of the business. And now we, we kind of bring in inventory and sales together. So you can look at, like, uh, look at this stuff, gross margin return on investment. You know, you're currently at 6.3, your goal is 6.1, all right? So actually you're doing better than your goal right now. But you could go in, you can click on that number and see, you know, what factors are, are leading to that. And you can see by supplier what your gross margin return on investment is, which ones are doing great and which ones are not doing so great. Um, out of stock percentages, uh, days of supply of inventory, your inventory turns, how fast is your inventory turning uh, through the cycle? Uh, with this company right now, their goal is seven and they're at 20, which is, I mean, they're cranking it. Uh, probably because of COVID, uh, somebody talked about. But anyway, anyway, so inventory and sales. We have another one, one with inventory and employees. So all your warehouse people uh, looking at those uh, measures. The self-service I talked about. So these are some I put on here already. Uh, my active SKU count compared to last year. My inventory turns based on cost of goods sales. Uh, my days of supply. Uh, and, and I can add other things here that if I want to to uh, this display just by clicking on this note, little thing here and I can come over here and, and uh, you know, I can grab any of these measures and I can add a new stamp in here. If there's a stamp here I didn't want, you know, I can like, uh, maybe I don't need this active SKU count anymore. I can just drag that right off into the trash can and now it's gone, right? So this is my display. I can control it and I can bring in any of those measures. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show you here is something new. We've been working with our are closely with our team in Leiden, uh, forecasting. So now as part of Inventory Advisor, we're gonna be able to offer forecasting. Um, so we start out with a list by supplier, how many products do they have, how many are out of stock now, um, how many are gonna be out of stock within 14 days, uh, how many cases were sold in the last 28 days and when, uh, uh, and what's the expected loss uh, if, if we run out? Uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to pick a supplier. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we, this is an interesting supplier called Happy Dad. Very nice supplier. So not so I picked him. I just want to focus on him, and I'm going to click on him now, and I'm going to go look at the products for that supplier. 
So here are, the, here are the SK, all the SKUs for the supplier. I can see the inventory I have on hand today. I can see the next date that that's going to be out of stock based on our projection. Now we're using R under the covers to do all the, handle all the forecasting. So you know, or R handles advanced forecasting to like the nth degree. Um, I can see the number of days that current inventory is going to last me based on the forecast, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I can pick even, I can show you some analytics here. You can pick on one of these products and I can look at the forecast and I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to, I want to bring in August, September, and October, and I don't want to see December yet. So here's historical. I can see my historical sales over time. It varies by day, and this is actual sales cycles for this product. And then here's the forecast. And what we've built into this is not only using R to forecast based on recent sales plus what's, what happened last year, but also I have the ability to enter adjustments. Like for Happy Dad, you know, during October, I want to, I, I expect to see 50 more cases than we normally sell because we have a special price discount. So the forecast builds that in to the forecast. So now I can see, ah, oh, now my sales are going to be up to here. So. All that is done automatically through the system and it, with the R forecasting. I can uh, look at stock levels over time. So this is my stock level over time. And now here's the forecast for my stock levels. And I can see when I'm going to run out. And if I don't, if I don't replenish, uh, it's, that's my stock level, negative. Uh, and then I can see my sales over time down here. These are actual sales. So on one screen, I can graph the sales and the stock level. So cool stuff, you know, there's a lot in here. Uh, and again, I was very happy to work with the team in Leiden to, to make this happen. Um, next thing I want to cover. General Ledger Advisor. So this is one, so many people have already talked about it. So this is really a generic application that applies to any, you know, applies to any industry that has a general ledger. Um, well, anybody could use this. Uh, you can investigate financial data, and you can dive into it. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, it can be updated every day. It's just like your diver is. Uh, it automatically brings all that data together into one spot. So you can have one view. You can look at a P&L with all the stuff that goes into a profit and loss statement all on one screen and then dive into it. Um, so let's head into that. Okay, General Ledger Advisor. So here on one screen, right, I have, this is the P&L. Uh, I can look at a particular company, I can look at all the companies, I can look at a, this is a combined director, I can pick one director and just look at their P&L just that quickly, go back to all values. I can dive into the data, like if I want to go look at operating supplies, right, this, I can see actual budget here, but I want to dive into that. So I can dive into that and look at, I can look at the GL transactions that went into that. So here's all the GL transactions. And then I could, you know, here's an accounts payable summary batch. So let's, let's dive into that and look at those AP transactions that went into that summary batch. And here they are. All at your fingertips. And whoever has security can see this, and they can only see what they're allowed to see. But a lot of stuff in here. Very, very powerful. Uh, okay, next. I'm running out of time, I can tell. Uh, <laughs> performance advisor. This is our, our latest and greatest. Uh, lets you um, analyze how your team is doing. Your, still, your salespeople, your sales force, your employees, your, your healthcare, your healthcare workers. Uh, categories can be defined and weighted. Uh, they, uh, so you can apply a higher 
weight to one category than, than another. Uh, everybody is ranked, um, easy to use. So I'm gonna really quick, I mean, you can read the rest, but I'm gonna quick go in and show that. So this comes with a preloaded measure factory. So we, we have a script that preloads the measure factory. And for a wine and liquor distributor, it automatically creates about 1,500 measures in measure factory that you can use to rank people or to look at their performance. And then you come in and say, okay, now these are what, this is what I want to analyze. All right, I want to look at, uh, I, want to look at I want to define something called dollar growth. And here's the calculation. Year-to-date revenue minus last year divided by uh, last year times 100. So it's going to be a percentage. Uh, I want to look at on-premise dollar growth. And here's the calculation. I want to look at off-premise. Uh, and even program advisor. So if you have program advisor, you can, okay, I want to, I want to analyze program advisor performance, which is year-to-date goal met divided by the number of programs you're in times 100. So it's going to be a percentage. And here's the weights. So the program per per performance, I have weighted twice as much as the other ones, just to show you, you can do that. And then I tell which, which is a better number. Is the higher number better or is there a lower number better? Um, and then we do the ranking. And the ranking happens very quickly because it's pulling the data out of that measure factory and then doing the rank. So all, everything that's in measure factory is, is like very quick. So when I click on generate reports, this is doing this real time. And it's done. It just did it across those one, two, three, four, five, six categories. And now if I come back here, go back to home, and I look at my performance reports, you know, one of the performance reports shows me by category. So this is my dollar growth one. I can see here's all my salespeople. Alphabetically, that's the res resulting value of that calculation. This is where they ranked. This is how many number of points they accumulated. If I want to see it by, uh, and sort of by salesperson, I want to see it by who ranked. Uh, here's the ranking, one through whatever. But I can see who ranked the highest. And I can do this category by category. But the big thing here is the performance advisor sales report. So now on one screen, we just put them all together. So I can tell across my entire organization for each of the categories, what they're, where they ranked overall and where they ranked within their team. And it's color coded. So if somebody's coded green, that means they're in the top 20% of the results. If they're red, they're in the bottom 20% of those results. If they're not in no, no color, that means they're in the middle someplace. And then you have your final ranking over here. So I can see who ranked, you know, uh, number one within the team, who ranked within the company. Uh, so that is ready. Uh, and I don't have time for my last one, which is the, uh, the actually our newest is cannabis, uh, the cannabis uh, stuff. But I can show that tonight to anybody that's interested. Um,